Hi, my name is Rickard, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install and use some gradient maps. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go to File, Open. We're going to open the photo called Stephen Jones. All right, and the simplicity of a gradient map is that you're applying a gradient. So let's make a quick gradient here. And if we go to our gradient tool, we can pick one of these gradients. Let's pick this one here that goes from purple to orange. Okay, so that's our gradient. And what a gradient map is going to do is it's going to take this color and this color and it's going to map it to the lightness and darkness of your image. So let me go ahead and show you that. I'm going to go down here right above the layer and select gradient map. And the gradient map by default is going to take your foreground color and apply it to the darks and your background color and apply it to the lights. So what we can do here is we can actually select this dark color, go to our background color, select the orange color. And now when we create our gradient map, it'll actually map, uh, match this. So there you go. Now you can see what's happening here. The dark parts of the gradient are being given the purple color and the light parts of the image are being given the orange color. All right, so that is the simplicity of a gradient map, and that's how you create a duotone in Photoshop. Now, the other thing you can use gradient maps for is color grading. And to do that, you're simply going to change the blending mode from normal to one of the overlay, which is from overlay to hard mix. Now, I would recommend either overlay or soft light. Those are the two that are going to work the best. Usually I use soft light because it's a subtle um, color grading to the image, whereas overlay tends to be too strong. So if we go on overlay there, and you can see what that's doing. It's actually color grading the image. And if we pick a different, or if we change our color gradient here, like for example, we could make this more of a blue color and this more of a yellow color. You can see how that's affecting the image and it's color grading it. So, you know, if I wanted this to be more of a nighttime scene, I would want all the colors to be more strikingly blue. And I could do something along these lines. And there you go. Now it feels more like the sun's gone down. Um, so that's how you can use gradient maps for color grading. Simply change the blending bl mode from, to either overlay or soft light. Put it back to normal and you're getting a duotone. All right, now if you've downloaded my gradient maps pack, what you're going to do is once you've created a gradient, click here and then click on the gear and then click on load gradients. And then wherever the gradient preset file downloaded to, which is probably in your downloads folder, um, it probably arrived as a zip file, so it may be in, in a folder after you've unzipped it. Simply click on that, click open, and now you're going to see all those gradient maps. So they've been added here. And the first one, the first two actually, are kind of templates. They're straight up neutral, and if you put those on soft light, you can see it actually does nothing to the image. And the advantage of this is you can now do subtle color gradients or color um, grading. And you can do it as, as you're watching the image, you can see what effect it's having on it. And the further you push it toward color, the more it's going to affect the color. And the more you push it down, it's going to actually affect the darkness. And as you push it toward white, it's going to affect the lightness. So generally, you want to stay within this band here where you're not affecting the lightness or the darkness, but you are affecting the color. OK, so that's what that one's for. And all these that are more subtle in their nature, OK, 
kind of all the way going up to this one here, those are going to be uh, gradient maps that are going to be best for color grading. And this is on soft light already, so we can just flip through these and you can see the effect that it has on the image. It immediately gives the whole image a new color grade and a new look. And from here forward, you can also use these for color grading, but they're going to have a very strong effect. These, um, from this one here to the end, are really made for duotones. And all of these will work really well to create interesting duotone looks which uh, you'll see is quite popular. Um, Spotify used it last year on most of their marketing campaigns. You see quite a few other companies now using this kind of a look. And also if you do this and then add some white elements um, on top of your image, we'll just quickly add something here. This is not really part of the tutorial, but I'm just showing you um, what you can do. You know, by just adding a few black and white elements on top, you get kind of a cool graphic look. You know, or maybe if you want a, a message about silencing or something. Oh, cool look. All right, so that's what those gradients are for. There's one last thing I wanted to show you, which is if you go back to your gradient presets, you'll notice there's two here at the end. One is a dark blue to black, and the other one's a white to a yellow. And the way to use these is they are for color grading, but they give you a little more control of how your, your whites and your blacks are affected. So in this case, this is designed for the lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the blending mode on multiply. So what that's doing is it's adding that yellow color, but it's only adding it to the light areas of the image, whereas the darker areas of the image are actually not affected. So if I turn this on and off, you'll notice that any of the dark areas of the image are not getting any yellow added to them. It's only the light areas that are getting that yellow color added. Now if I add another gradient map and give it this one here, that, that dark blue, and put this on screen, Again, what it's doing is it's adding that blue to the darks, but not affecting the lights. So with this combination, you can see it's muting the whole image because it's, it's bringing up our blacks and bringing down our whites. And that's uh, pretty common. You'll see that with kind of vintage-y looking stuff um, or... Instagram filters often use this trick where they pull up the blacks and push down the yellows. So that's what those two gradients are for. Um, use them in multiply and screen and once you're on them simply click on this color here and you can change that to suit your needs. So for example if I wanted a cyan cast there I could do that and then maybe in here I wanted a warm cast I could do that. Um, there you go, that looks more like washed out film. So that's what those two last gradients are for. Um, otherwise, quick recap, this is your neutral one if you want to do your own color grade. The rest of these are all for color grading, and then from here down are all for creating duotones. And obviously you can adjust any of these, but um, they're all great starting points. And the last two, as I just mentioned, is for applying just to the blacks or just to the whites. And make sure you put those on screen and multiply. All right, there you have it. One last thing to mention um, is 
gradient maps work best on images where the subject is separated from the background and has high contrast. So this, for example, is a great image for a gradient map. Because you have the subject isolated, there's also um, good gradation from dark to light in the face. So let's put a gradient map on her. Let's pick one of these. Ugh. Right away, you got a really cool looking graphic. So photo, graphic. Um, and most of these will work really well on these images. Yeah, all these look really good. Okay, um, so that's a, an example of an image that works great. This one here is already uh, one that we know works really well. This one, for example, um, that we do have a nice contrast between her and the background, but you can see we have a lot of other things happening. And even though a gradient map is going to look relatively decent on here, um, at smaller sizes, you kind of lose what it is. And it just doesn't, it doesn't feel like the image was intended to be a duotone, if that makes any sense. Um, same with this one. There's too much happening in the background. It's a great image, but put a gradient map on it and you kind of lose what's happening there. This one, same problem. Too much happening in the background. She's not separated enough. You're going to kind of lose. You have to really look to try to figure out what's going on there. Because with your gradient map, you're essentially killing a lot of what our eyes use to differentiate things. So color, uh, contrast, all those things are being sacrificed to some degree um, for the benefit of color. So you have to make sure your elements contrast well. This is an amazing image for gradient maps. This is actually one of my favorite. I really like this image as a duotone. It really works well. Yeah, in almost every color. Although I think this is my favorite color combination here on this image. It just works really well and really creates a striking image. So there you have it. That's how you can use gradient maps. If you go down to the description of this video, you will see a link to my gradient maps pack. And also you can take the full fairy specimen photo composite course, uh, where I go heavily into how to composite and also how to color grade with gradient maps. I'll go through it much more extensively than I've covered in this short tutorial. So check that out. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel and see you next time.